Welcome to this video by URLaw.org. This is TJ, and I want to show you a simple, fast way to stop a legal attack. Now, we're talking about something where they're coming after you for something, maybe criminal, child support, attacks, something where an agency or government program is, or even maybe an opposing attorney is simply coming after you for a legal attack. This isn't for something where there might be a dispute between two private parties. This is really more of an institutional attack against you. So just keep in mind, typically most people with dealing with court situations are going to try to make things complex for themselves. And that's really where they get you. They trip you into this complex system. We're going to show you a very simple system. This will only take a few minutes to explain. And it literally takes less than 60 seconds to say a couple of times. But of course, in the back and forth of the court, it may take a few minutes. But you have to stay focused. So remember these corporate courts have no authority until you grant it to them. They require you to volunteer for them. If you don't know that concept, look into some of our other studies on that issue. But the bottom line is they don't have the authority over you unless you've harmed somebody. And until that's happened, you have to voluntarily go into some sort of contract arrangement with them. So what we want to do, though, is stay respectful, but be firm. You know, treat, the, treat your honor with honor. You might just get a better, you know, wish granted to you if you do. We're not there to fight the judge. We're really there to fight the party bringing it against you. Okay, so keep that always in mind. They're presuming these contracts that simply don't exist. Pre, if you really look up the, the origin of it, equals no. We're going to be doing a lot of studying on the breakdown of language here in the future. But that means there is no contract just by their presumptions. Now, this does not require knowledge of statutes and codes. It's just one simple procedure. And, you know, like I said, it could be traffic, criminal, child support, uh, even a lawsuit by a third-party debt collector, a tax agency, something where somebody's, you know, it could be the grass cops or the building inspector. Who knows? Whoever is bringing it some authority, saying they have authority over you, you have to challenge that authority. Again, this is not for disputes between individual parties. But put all the burden of proof on the accuser. Keep doing this, you know, constantly asking questions or a conditional acceptance. You know, does that apply to me? Or I'll accept that if you can prove it applies to me. That's a conditional acceptance. So keep that methodology in mind. We're always putting the burden of proof on them. So in writing or in person, this, this technique could be used. And this has been done by many of our members and recently we had somebody come to us to remind us just how simple it really is and this person's had a lot of success with multiple cases with this so um, on the ticket or the document the letter the bill whatever it is um, you know you're gonna direct your attention towards that party bringing it to you that agency or that individual we're really not gonna go after the judge we want them on our side but we wanna direct it towards the proper party and get their support uh, you know, this really to the party dragging you into something, okay? So you could write this, like maybe you get a ticket or uh, an indictment or something that's come to you, it's been delivered to your door. The first thing you should do is respond with something along these lines. Now, this might slightly change, but don't add much to it. Keep it simple. The simpler, the better. And if I was in court or you were in court, you might have to stand up and say something, but you could simply write something to this effect if it's just on the document. You might have to do both. You might have to write on it and still show up and do it again in court. Don't be afraid to do something very simple. So you might say, well, before they call you up, and you say, I'm here on that matter. Before we can proceed on this matter as director and beneficiary of my legal person and corporation, you have 21 days to respond in writing and provide proof of claim with evidence that you have legal and lawful authority as my public servant to bother me at all. And you could put it in slightly different words if you're trying to be polite, but generally speaking, you need to be that blunt. And then if they, they go on, they'll say, well, we're here to enter a plea, we're here to do this, what's this sort of thing you're bringing up here? They're going to say everything except answer the question, usually. And then you simply say, well, excuse me, but you know, until then, we cannot proceed, and can we? I mean, I need to know if this... Uh, if you have the proper authority. I'm not challenging whether the court has the authority, but I'm challenging the individual bringing it to me. The court gets ticked off when you challenge the court, but challenge the party bringing it to the court. So don't fall for their tricks, and the court will try to pull you out of, off your position. They're going to go off to other issues, say we're here, not here for that, whatever. 
You just simply come back to it. I call it being like Andy Griffith. Well, Your Honor, well, I, I really don't understand. And by the way, we're using that word understand very carefully because it means I don't agree without arguing. Your Honor, I really don't understand. And isn't there a matter I've raised that still needs to be addressed? How can I enter a plea or proceed uh, until this is answered? So with all due respect, there is a matter I've raised which needs to be addressed. Then repeat the statement, the mantra that we just gave you. They may test you three times. <laughs> If you didn't know this, the, the Wizard of Oz was actually instruction on how the new legal system was going to work after 1933, after the bankruptcy. And uh, many films have been made that actually have very important messages in them, not by accident. And in that one, they said, Dorothy, you could have gone home any time you wanted. Just kick your heels together three times and you can go home. And that's what she did. Well, they may test you three times, so be prepared for them to ignore it, act like it's stupid or crazy, you know, try to make you go away and come back, sit you down and bring you back later. Whenever this happens, you start over again. Go right back to the same message. Three times is the charm sometimes. So again, I do not understand, nor can I consent to proceed until, and so you, want, you don't want to consent to proceed until they answer and provide evidence of authority. You're not just asking them to tell you that there's a statute. You want the evidence of authority. Then repeat yourself and address the prosecutor or the attorney coming against, coming against you, okay? Um, before we can proceed this matter, as director and beneficiary of my legal person or corporation, you have 21 days to respond in writing. By the way, memorize this. Say it a few times until you can say it in your sleep. Before we can proceed with this matter, as director and beneficiary of my legal person or corporation, you have 21 days to respond in writing and provide proof of claim with evidence that you have legal and lawful authority as my public servant to bother me at all. Until then, I cannot consent to proceed. Do you understand? And again, keep directing this. Keep saying this. You can do this sort of in writing and in live situation or both. Be prepared. That, that won't be hard for you to memorize these simple lines and stay on script. Okay. Then if you want to go into situations like subrogation, which we've taught, uh, we've discussed with our members, we've had a lot of success with that. That's a little more complex where you talk about, you know, not being the trustee, you are the beneficiary, where are their bonds, you could bring forth the, the silver bond, those techniques that we've also discussed in our premium member calls. But again, those are, you need to have that as your plan B. But this is your initial salvo whenever you get into one of these situations. Start with this first, then bring in those techniques as it moves forward if necessary. Hopefully you don't have to. Uh, but uh, both of these things, it's a one-two punch, this simple jurisdictional challenge, which is what this is, plus the subrogation behind it should help you deal with the vast majority of the situations coming against you. You'd be surprised how simple it is. If you start arguing and debating and trying to prove something, it's over. You're now just in their court under their jurisdiction. Uh, so if you want to get more training like this, get to URLaw.org. Look up our memberships. We have the premium membership is where you really get the rich content and the discussions. So again, go to URLaw.org. And I thank you for taking your time to watch this video. We'll see you as a member.